Welcome to 10,000 Africans Podcast. I'm your humble host, J.D. Tarpet. And before we get to our guest for today, over the last four weeks, I have been traveling across the continent. I went from Kenya to Uganda to Ghana to Nigeria to Liberia. That is five countries in the month of April. It's been a great time. I met wonderful people, including some of you. And it's just wonderful to see the growth and opportunity and entrepreneurship that's happening on the continent. I have nothing, nothing but hope about the future of the continent because there's so much happening. And if you haven't been or if you haven't been for a long time, visit whether it's your country or another country on the continent and see the growth that is happening there. And for our last housekeeping item, um, let me just note that I am inviting advertisers to the podcast. So if you want to advertise with the 10,000 Africans podcast, or if you know someone who would like to, um, on the podcast as well as on the video platform, Tuna Cheeky, which will be uh, doing a lot more uh, video interviews, hit us up. It is 10,000 Africans at gmail.com. Uh, hit us up and we'd love to, to advertise uh, with you. And the video platform we'll be publishing uh, some of our interviews on has over 115,000 subscribers with about 3 million views per month. So there's an opportunity. Reach out and let me know. Let's get this ball rolling. Without further, further ado, our guest for today is Dr. Chinelo Njaka. She is a social scientist living in the UK. Um, she is a Nigerian American, born and raised in Minnesota, uh, and has been studying race uh, and ethnicity uh, for a long time, as well as her interest and in work and research in uh, community development, specifically in marginalized communities. So, welcome to the show, Dr. Njaka. It's great to have you on. I talked a little bit about you, but that you know that doesn't do justice to your story. So uh, please fill in the gap. Tell us your story and how that has led you to where you are now. Okay. Well, I was born in um, Minneapolis, Minnesota, to a Nigerian father and an African American mother, and um, grew up uh, grew up there. Did my undergraduate work there at McAllister College in Saint Paul, Minnesota. And then um, did my graduate work in London, uh, UK, and then Manchester, UK. And um, so that's how I ended up over here. I, I grew up uh, with knowledge of my African heritage and um, I guess also African-American heritage. And in terms of internally felt uh, like I, I had a good idea of kind of what, what that meant to me, but externally wasn't really... Um, seen like I was just kind of either seen or not seen as black and when I first moved to London um, that was when I, I realized that race wasn't what America said race was um, that race looks differently in different locations and so um, the census form here like the racial classification forms here had black African black Caribbean and black other as the choices were in America it was just black and it was kind of like this monolith um, and I was really taken aback by that because I mean they acknowledge that there's different ethnicities within blackness that blackness can like can look different ways um, even though of course at the end of the day like uh, there's a, a strong um, diasporic uh, notion of blackness that, that definitely exists um, but it gave me the opportunity to really start exploring different parts of me and how I see myself and how I attach myself to this idea of blackness um, in a way that felt very personal. And so from there, I started studying mixed race because it was kind of similar. Um, the, the issues aren't the same, but they're they're similar, perhaps more broad on, um, on being able to tie ethnicity to race, um, whereas within black communities, it's not so obvious or it's not so visual. And, um, and so... Uh, yeah, I started, started studying how race is seen in different locations in the U.S. and in the U.K. specifically, but also looking at some other um, national contexts, Brazil, uh, a little bit of Canada, um, and a little bit within Africa, um, but but mainly focusing on the U.S. and in the U.K. And um, 
yeah, I guess uh, that's kind of become my passion now is to just explore identities, uh, racialized identities, um, ethnic identities, and, and kind of how people express them. It's such an interesting topic, I think, because race is such a touchy thing yeah. that <laughs> I can imagine that it is... Uh, not an easy topic to look at, uh, to research, or to even talk about. Um, and no, it's it's fascinating. I mean, it's, it, it it in that way it makes it fascinating because it's. I mean, you you can never get to the end of like what is race and then have an answer and then you move on. Like it's always evolving. It's always changing based on where you're located, what time period you're in, who you're talking to. Like I mean, it's 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 very uh, fluid. And and that's what makes it really fascinating. And I think I think I guess the, this this question just comes to mind that you know a lot of people have opinions on on race and what it is. There are people that say, oh, race is a real thing. Some people say race is not a real thing. It's a, it's a social construct. So, what is your opinion as somebody who has studied race extensively? Um, well, I mean the. the I guess the succinct uh, version of my PhD was, is that race is a social construct just because it, it, it does change so much that like it can't be anything but that. And I know that, that that's not a term that's readily understood and, and people are like, well, what do you mean race is a, con a social construct? Like, I see that you're black, I see that you're white, whatever. But um, when you start really picking it apart, like what makes somebody white? What makes somebody black? Um, and does that change over time? Like when I'm in the U S I'm categorically black. When I'm in Nigeria, they call you, call me, um, uh, Onyocha, which means white. Um, so, uh, and, and some people identify me as mixed race, even though I don't identify myself as such. Um, so are all those people right? Or, or who's right, who's wrong? No one can really say. And, um, I mean, if you start trying to define what makes race like, okay, dark skin. Well, there are some white people, for instance, that have darker skin than some of the lightest black people are. And then that's in quotes. Um, and, uh, like, uh, phenotype, like nose structures, eye structures, like you see those in all races, so-called races. So, um, I mean, there's no real definitive definition for race that fits. And, and that's kind of the, the fundamental way that I break it apart. But then if you start, I mean, in terms of mixed race, which makes which is another interesting spin. Most black people in America have multi generational mixedness, yet mm -hmm. they're considered black. But if you have a black parent and a non black parent, or maybe specifically a white parent, you're considered mixed race now. And what is the practical difference between somebody who has uh, multi general mixedness, or multi generational mixedness versus single generational mixedness? I guess would be the term. I mean, in terms of genetic mix or something like that or makeup or something like that i don't think there really is much to say about that because i mean it shouldn't matter whether or not your your great 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 grandfather is white or if your father is white we're the ones who just decide what mixes is and what mixes isn't is another um i guess is another point of evidence that shows that we're kind of making it up as we go along or, and that's not to say that doesn't have real social consequences race obviously does i mean there's there's uh, a social research that is based around race and like you can see that there's disparities between the so-called races and epidemi epidemiologically you have differences in how uh, illnesses and disease uh, occur within the so-called races but ultimately genetically we're, we're, we're not distinct. One of the things that I, I, I look at is you know if you take a look at you know just the transformation and the fluidity of race uh, in in South Africa, in the South African context during apartheid, I think mm -hmm. that is a prime example of, of, uh, <laughs> of the fact that it is a social construct. Um, mm. If you can just, you know, sign somebody up to be white and the next day you can sign them up to be, to be black or Indian or something like that, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> talking about, talking about, uh, about I, IDPAD, it's uh, the international decade of people of African descent. Exciting, exciting. Yep. Um, uh, it's very so, exciting. Uh, so you've been you've been working with them in that sense. You have participated in one of the events uh, in Guyana. I think that was about last week. Is it? Last week, yeah. Last week. How was that? And I and if you can if you can go into a little detail a little bit, you know how how that is you know changing things for people of African descent if it is. I just wanted to give an overview of what the decade actually is. Um, so the UN uh, declared uh, and I guess dedicated a a ten year period uh, 
to focus on people of African descent. And so that time period is 2015 when it was declared, and it lasts until 2024. And the three main goals of it are recognition, justice, and development. So what the UN is trying to promote is um, having the international community recognize that people of African descent represent a distinct group of people whose human rights um, must be promoted and protected. Um, and what they mean by people of African descent are people that are not living on the continent. Yeah, um, I, I thought it was actually, it was a very interesting conference. Very, It was very powerful to see so many people from different parts of the world um, convening in Georgetown, Guyana, for this event. There were people invited from all around the world to speak about varying issues uh, around the decade of the people of African descent. And then there were also community members who perhaps didn't, come from a human rights background or anything that we're coming in to learn more about people of African descent and the decade and the initiatives and how we can better advocate for ourselves and, and promote our human rights and better ourselves. And so it was a really good mix of people um, coming together for that purpose. In your, in your work, what is, the, what is the biggest challenge that you faced uh, so far? Um, well, uh, my my work is pretty varied. Um, I guess my, my heart is with community development, which by nature means that I'm interested in various different elements of community uh, that kind of make it work and, you know, trying to improve and trying to um, implement different uh, aspects of, of uh, like organizations and, and networking and that sort of thing in order to improve communities. Um, one of my uh, main focuses of work right now is sexual health promotion and HIV prevention, and um, uh, specifically within Af uh, communities um, of people of African descent. And so the main struggle that I've been having is around um, s speaking to people uh, about HIV, keeping it in the collective consciousness of, of people of African descent, um, and and kind of dealing with the, the stigma and discrimination that goes along with talking about HIV. What is it that uh, uh, that drives you to continue to, to, to do what you do despite, uh, you know, the challenges that exist um, within your work? I think it's injustice. I mean, that might sound kind of corny, but it's. I think that's what's driven me since I was a child is just always having this, this I don't know, feeling inside me that injustice is wrong and that and that things need to be put right and what i can do is to is to promote that in my life and and hopefully like encourage others to do so or or set things right as i can set things right but but really just a fundamental um feeling of dis-ease when things when when injustice happens when people are not treated right when when uh i guess bad things happen to good people like i mean just just any form of injustice is something that just kind of um, it, it just really nag like it, it nags on me. It's not something I can let go. I just have to do what I can to to try to solve it somehow. Absolutely, and I think a lot of people need to adapt that mindset and you know to to push to make our world a better place. Now, um, there are a lot of uh, young people who you know will listen to this and they want to um, they want to do something. They want to you know add some value to their community. So what is your what is that one advice that you give to, to young people, whether it be it uh, people on the continent or people in the diaspora? Um, I think it's kind of twofold for me. I think the first thing I would say is be stay be and stay true to yourself. Um, I, I think that that was a lesson that I eventually came to learn. But I mean, it was very difficult for me as a young person trying to well, trying to, I guess, be myself and also balance that with being accepted by other people. And I think often when I was younger, I veered more towards being accepted or trying to be something or someone that was accepted or acceptable by like the, the wider society and my peers than to staying true to myself and, and um, I guess, kind of allowing any backlash that may have happened to happen. So, um so kind of once I s started realizing that I, it, that I didn't want to be everybody else, I wanted to be myself and that myself was okay and that I'm okay the way that I am and started growing in that, I realized that the people that were around me were people that were 
good people to have around. They weren't people that were trying to bring me down or were jealous of me or whatever. They were people that were trying to support me. And so that, I think, it's a hard road to walk, but ultimately, um, I think it's the better road to walk because we're best at being ourselves and we are our best when we are ourselves. Um, so that would be the first uh, part of that. And the second part, um, which is what kind of came to mind first, but I think what I just said leads to this is that creativity is really important. And so tied into being who you are, be creative in who you are. I mean, be, be creative and then let your creativity kind of help express who you are um, because we don't need cookie cutter people. We need people, individual people that are all different, that all have different gifts to give, um, that all have different insights and, and different ways of seeing the world um, to, to make this world a, a better place and to, to exist in society. We don't need the same and, and mm-hmm. people just trying to be other people. We need, <laughs> we need people to be who they authentically are. And, and sometimes that takes some creativity to, to figure that out and to also express that. So um, those are kind of the two main things I would say. How can people connect with you? How can people find you? Okay, well, um, Peckham Rice is in his infancy, but I do have um, a social media set up. So we have um, Instagram t- and Twitter, um, which is just at Peckham Rights, one word, no underscores or anything. And um, a forthcoming website, which is peckhamrights.org. Uh, That's P E C K H A M. R I G H T S um, dot org. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, and, you know, our final question um, uh, if you had 10,000 Africans, uh, Chinelo, uh, at your disposal with expertise in every field, what would you do? I think this is a really fascinating question. Um, I thought about this one a lot because I, I, really didn't know at first but <laughs> what i the conclusion that i came to was that what i would do is i would sit those 10,000 africans somehow in a group like a room a really big room mm-hmm. and and start to encourage conversations among people and somehow i, I don't i mean if if we're t- i mean i'm assuming this is an ideal ideological <laughs> thing so i'm going to get ideological yeah, even more so we could, we could somehow have a giant conversation um and and just start talking about where we are like where where we're from what our perspectives are what our worldviews are what are we're good at what we're not good at where fears are joys like everything um i think it could be such a powerful network um just of expertise and influence and perspective that somehow then i think we could harness together um to to start I mean, I guess to start addressing our issues and to to really start creating the society that we want to have. I mean, in terms of like what I would do with it, like I I think I mean that that would be what I'd want to know is I'd want to tap into to this resource and see like what what is it that what what's it like to be that person or another person and 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 that like I wouldn't I wouldn't need to do anything with it like you know like to like you know like build a something or like promote myself or whatever like it would really I'd really just enjoy the the information and knowledge and experience that that room of people would would have um so like that's about as far as i can go with that but i think that that would be such a powerful that that excites me to think about like just how much potential would be in that room of ten thousand african people absolutely absolutely i love it uh thank you thank you so much uh for coming on the podcast uh chinelo well, thank you it's been amazing having you on uh and uh and, you know, I look forward to, to seeing your work and hopefully working with you um, and, you know, Definitely. pushing pushing things forward because I think it is very important work that you are doing um, uh, and and hopefully it encourage more, encourages more people to do that. Um, yeah, so thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. And as always, thank you again for listening to this podcast episode. And as a reminder, remember... If you have some advertising to send our way, uh, please do. It is uh, 10,000africans at gmail.com. If you have any questions or concerns or topics, just reach out to us. I would love to hear from uh, all of you. Uh, Thank you again. Have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day.